Hi everyone. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how you can obtain scatter plots, sample covariance, and Pearson's correlations using SPSS. This video is mainly to serve as an accompaniment to a PowerPoint that I've created on these topics, which you can download at the link that is provided underneath the video description. Also, underneath the video description, you will find a link to the SPSS data file that is used in this presentation and that was used in the generation of the PowerPoint presentation. So I want to be clear, uh, this video demonstration is mainly going to focus in on the procedural aspects of generating scatter plots, covariances, and Pearson's correlation, whereas the PowerPoint provides a deeper conceptual overview of these topics and goes into topics such as hypothesis testing and interpretation of the results. Now when you download the data set, you will find a number of variables that are included. The first set of variables are measures of student performance goals, achievement, mastery goals, interest, and anxiety. And in the PowerPoint, I start off by demonstrating the generation of a scatter plot for the interest and achievement variables. So let's go ahead and open up SPSS and I will show you how to do that. So here we have our data and what we're going to do again is generate a scatter plot depicting the relationship between student interest and student achie achievement. So to do this we're going to go up to graphs, go to legacy dialogues, then go down to scatter dot. We'll click on that and then we'll highlight the box that says simple scatter. Click on define and then we will move our interest variable over to the x-axis and our achievement variable over to the y-axis. We'll click on OK and now we have our scatter plot. Now if we want to generate a line of best fit, we can do that as well. And this, this can be particularly useful in order to uh, you know, better uh, describe the nature of the relationship uh, in terms of being positive or negative. It can also be useful for identifying potential nonlinear relationships in your data. So what I'm going to do is double click in this box right here and now a chart editor editor opens up. I'm going to go to this box right here that says add fit line at total. So you can just see I'm just moving my cursor right over there and it shows up. I'm going to click on that and now I get a linear fit line. And if I wanted to explore possible nonlinear relationships between the variables, I could do that. One possible nonlinear relationship could be a quadratic uh, uh, relationship. I could click on apply right here after clicking quadratic. There's a, a hint of a curvature in the line but not much to really to speak of and if I wanted to look at a possible cubic relationship I can click on that and click apply and again there's just not much going on. So I'm gonna go back to linear right here because that's that's really how I was thinking about the relationship between these two variables. So I'm gonna click close and then click out of this and so now you can see that we have our fit line uh, that's fitted to our data and you can see that there's clearly a positive relationship between our two variables. Basically a positive relationship indicates that higher scores on one variable are associated with higher scores on the other variable and lower scores on one are associated with lower scores. So in this case we can see that students who had higher interest scores also tended to score higher with respect to achievement and students with lower interest scores tended to score lower with respect to achievement. I also want to mention too that this fit line that you see right here um, it has an equation that's given right here that is just a simple linear regression equation that was used to generate this um, this fit line right here. Now let's generate uh, a second scatter plot and in this case we're going to generate uh, the scatter plot for depicting the relationship between anxiety and achievement. So in this case I'm going to go back to graphs, go down to scatter, dot, simple scatter, define, and I'm going to move the interest variable out of this box and move anxiety in and we'll click on OK and so now you can see um, our scatter plot. It looks uh, like there is a negative relationship between these two variables. Again, I can double click in this box and go under chart editor and then click on add fit line at total and there's our fit line right there and so you can see we have evidence of a negative relationship. Basically with a negative relationship that would indicate that higher scores on one variable are associated with lower scores on the other. So in this case uh, with our uh, fit line right here uh, 
uh, um, it you know it looks like basically that students with higher levels of anxiety were were um, tended to score lower with respect to achievement. Students with lower levels of anxiety tended to score higher with respect to achievement. I also want to mention too that if you don't want that label on the line, you can easily get rid of it just by clicking at, at the bottom right here. It says attach label to line. If there's a check mark. If I want to get rid of it, I can just click off of that and click apply, and now that um, equation goes away. So there you go. That's how you generate a scatter plot in SPSS. Now let's generate um, covariances and uh, sample uh, and, and Pearson's correlations between two variables. So w one of the first examples I provide in the PowerPoint is where I'm generating the correlation uh, and covariance between mastery goals and student achievement. So in that particular case, uh, in order to generate the correlation, all we need to do is to go to analyze, correlate, and then we will go down to bivariate correlation so we'll click on that and this box opens up and so first off you'll notice that right here checked off is Pearson correlation there's also down here it's got tests of significance two-tailed and one-tailed and I discussed two-tailed and one-tailed tests in the PowerPoint so I'm not going to review all that here we're going to stick with our with our example though and leave it as two-tailed tests and we're, what we're going to be doing is testing whether there's a, a significant association between mastery goals and achievement. So what, we're, what we'll do is move mastery goals over to this box and achievement to this box and we'll go ahead and click on OK right here just to take a quick look. This is a correlation matrix and in the correlation matrix you'll see that we have um, our two variables that are represented in the principal diagonal you will see that there are ones so basically that is just the variance of a single standardized variable in the off diagonal you'll see that we have uh, the Pearson's correlation between our two variables with mastery and achievement and if we use Cohen's uh, conventions for judging uh, the size of the correlation which I discuss in the um, in the PowerPoint we would uh, we would describe that relationship as being large Next, you'll see that we have in this SIG uh, cell over here, we've got uh, a p-value that's given. And this p-value is compared against the alpha level um, for our test. So if we set alpha at 0 .00, uh, 0 0.05, excuse me, so at 0 0.05, then we would compare this p-value against that. And if the p-value that's observed is less than or equal to the alpha level, then we would reject the null hypothesis and infer that the population correlation is not zero. So in this case, our p-value is listed as 0 0.000. And technically, it's not actually zero. It's actually just a number that's very, very small. And this is uh, due to the rounding and SPSS. This would be the actual p-value. So typically, when you get something like 0 0.000, you would report it as uh, p less than 0 0.001. So you can see that this correlation is statistically significant and we would infer that the population correlation between mastery goals and achievement is not zero. I also want to mention you can see that the values that are shown above uh, the principal diagonal which again contains the ones uh, are uh, re repeated below the principal diagonal. So you only have to re uh, report on one set of um, of the uh, output so you can either report on this set right here or you can report on this set right here it's literally the same thing now if I want to generate a covariance between uh, these two variables uh, it just takes not really much more work uh, when I go under options right here I can click on cross product deviations and covariances and I can click on continue right here and so now our table will include uh, covariances so looking at this table we still have there's our principal diagonal for the correlation uh, matrix there's our P there's our uh, Pearson's R and significance level then down here you can see that this right here this is the covariance between mastery goals and achievement so the covariance is reflecting the relationship between two unstandardized variables and so that's the covariance and so um, 
a lot of times researchers don't spend much time trying to interpret the covariance. Uh, they generally are going to refer to Pearson's correlation, but sometimes you might uh, want to obtain the covariance, and so this is how you do it. So this is the covariance between the two variables. Obviously it's positive, so there's a positive relationship between these two variables, which we already knew by looking at Pearson's correlation uh, coefficient. Um, this value right here and uh, this value right here where it says it's still in the covariance line, but basically these are the variances of these two variables. So this is the variance right here for the mastery goals, and this is the variance for achievement. Now in the PowerPoint, I also show you that you can obtain a correlation matrix involving more than two variables. That's really pretty easy to do. I'm just going to reset this, and I'm going to select all of these variables right here, the performance goals all the way through anxiety, and um, move them over. I'm also going to go ahead and get rid of the, uh, yeah, I didn't want to keep the cross product deviations and covariances, otherwise it just adds more stuff to our um, our table and I don't really want to include that right now. So what I'll do is go ahead and click on OK so you can take a look. And so now we have our uh, correlation matrix. You can see here's our principal diagonal that contains ones um, on it. So this, these are again the variances of a single standardized variable. So we have um, the ones representing the variances of performance goals, achievement, mastery, etc. as if the variable has been standardized. Um, then you can also see on the off diagonal we have um, our correlation. So there's uh, negative 0.288 between uh, performance goals and achievement. We have our p-value that's given. Here it's 0 0.001. Uh, if we were using an alpha at 0 0.05 that would uh, uh, that correlation would be deemed statistically significant. Uh, there's the correlation between mastery goals and performance goals along with the p-value, interest and um, performance goals. You can see there's uh, a negative relationship there. It would be significant at 0.05 and so forth. Uh, you'll also notice that the correlations above the, the principal diagonal are repeated below. So you can see that basically the column one correlations um, are, are um, reproduced in, or excuse me, the row one correlations that we were talking about up here are reproduced in the first column uh, right here and so forth. So that's uh, what a correlation matrix would look like uh, where we have more than two variables. One other thing to note uh, as you're looking at this um, correlation matrix, you'll see that there are uh, asterisks that are given. Uh, these are used, these are kind of shorthand for uh, indicating whether or not you have statistical significance using different alpha levels. So you can see right here the one star uh, is, is indicating that the correlation is statistically significant at the 0 0.05 level. Two stars is indicating that the correlation is statistically significant at the alpha at 0 0.01 level. Okay, so that pretty well concludes this demonstration of how you can obtain scatter plots, covariances, and correlation using SPSS. Thanks for watching.